The successor of the spacecraft Tycho Deep Space is called Tycho Deep Space 2 and is currently in the process of being designed. In the following we'll hear the head of Copenhagen Suborbital Spaceship Group, Christian van Bengtsen, talk about the development of the new spaceship. Welcome to uh, Copenhagen Suborbitals of the Space Capsule Department. Um, the last couple of months has been a mixture of mission planning for the coming launches, but also further work on the space capsules. And uh, next to me is the latest and what I believe is the locked geometrical design for the space capsule Tycho Deep Space 2. And it's a boilerplate. It's just uh, a crude iron full-scale mock-up. Um, and it's created so we first of all can get an idea how does it actually look? What are the real sizes in full scale? Which sometimes surprises one when it's built. Um, but also it's, it's a way for us to do very basic testing without spending too much money and using materials which are difficult to uh, modify and to, uh, to work on. So this prototype here will be used for uh, drop testing at uh, Linear to see how the structure behaves, but also to see how the capsule actually catches water during a splashdown. We could use it for full-scale uprighting uh, tests with uh, uprighting balloons, inflatable, as we had on the first space capsule. And I think in general, we're just gonna add on, we're gonna remove, we're gonna you know, work this with just iron and a welding machine and see what are all the parts needed to get all the subsystems to work on this one. So this is going to be a basic first model and it's going to be the foundation before we move on to Tycho Deep Space 2, the actual version which is made from aluminum. And uh, it's, a, it's a cheap version. We can make this for about three to 4,000 kroners, which is about $600. And uh, this, this part here is actually, I think it's only 18 laser cut parts. So it, it's a fast way to get uh, a fast production or a fast way to, to work with the, with the future designs. This is one of the initial meetings among the people who designed Tycho Deep Space 2. They discuss the design and possible new ideas to be implemented in the coming spaceship. If you follow our work, you will uh, of course observe that this uh, new capsules, Tycho Deep Space 2, has a different geometry than the previous one, which was a more classical Apollo shape. And the reason why the diameter has gone from a 2 meter diameter to a 1.6 meter diameter is because we can actually reduce the mass of the launch vehicle by 50% by doing so. But decreasing the diameter um, <coughs> create other difficulties. For instance, we cannot keep the old angles on the space capsule and we need to, to widen those, and that's why this capsule has a different configuration uh, for the pressure hull. This is uh, the pressure hull where the astronaut is going to be, and the uh, upper section here, which are going to be produced in two parts, is the rescue section, or the recovery section. This is where you're going to have the uprighting bags for uprighting uh, stability after splashdown. This is where you're going to have all the parachutes, the main parachutes, a droke for initial air braking and before the droke we're actually going to introduce a system called a balut. And a balut is, a, as the word might indicate, a mixture between a balloon and a parachute. And it's a system that can be deployed in supersonic uh, velocities. And by doing so we're going to get a stable re-entry um, by having a long liner going to this balloon who is actually getting some drag even though the atmosphere is very uh, thin. But in general we have only created just the basic geometries because all those subsystems I just mentioned we, uh, we still need to work those in details and before we know exactly <coughs> sorry, how they're done and where they're placed we only need the basic shape. And so that's actually the reason why Tycho Deep Space has a different shape but we can still take the technology from the previous capsule and actually transfer it into this one here.
The aerodynamic stability of the spaceship was tested on 10th scale models in a wind tunnel. This experiment is to verify stability when the less motor is in use and stability of the capsule when it re-enters the atmosphere. The wind tunnel provides a rising airflow at 250 km per hour. It is made to train skydivers at free fall, but this time the tunnel has another purpose. It tests space capsules. You might remember this one-tenth scale model uh, in balsa and pine of the entire system of Tiger Deep Space 2, the capsule and the launch escape system tower and rocket and this was actually the model that we uh, spent for the wind tunnel testing and right now it's just being shined up with a bit of makeup so we can actually use it for a demonstrator uh, to, to show the work but this, this model here was a, vital, uh, was a vital component and we actually managed to find the solution to make the whole system aerodynamically stable actually by having this model and by testing in the wind tunnel with the at Copenhagen Air Experience. But besides the full scale boilerplate mock up and the one tenth scale, I'm also working other scales of uh, this capsule, and uh, next to me here is a one third scale. A similar type sized capsule was used earlier in the fall of 2012, so just do some initial. Um, flotation uh, exercises, but this is a more detailed version of Tiger Deep Space 2 in one third scale and it's actually going to be used to verify if the stability of this is correct. So we're actually going to launch a couple of these hopefully in the summer of 2013 and it's going to be a launch escape test launch. Uh, so right now I'm producing two of those and here's actually a small solid propellant, not fueled at the moment, naturally. Uh, less engine produced by René from the, the capsule team as well. And when it's all done and combined, this will be on this tower here. And the tower, of course, will be on top of the capsule. The space capsule is created in solid works to ensure that all subsystems fit together and that the construction is accurate before production begins. Not only the final flight version is created, but also the many prototypes that go through various tests such as buoyancy, stability and splashdown. Den beregner jo momentarm i et punkt, hvis den skal rotere. Right now the capsule is uh, made in two parts and the reason for that is not only production itself, but also because we need to have the correct um, distribution of mass correspondingly working uh, with the results we had from the wind tunnel testing. So we don't know exactly yet, because I haven't done the calculations, how much mass should be inside the capsule. So we're going to have the right center of mass before the launch. But eventually we're going to have two of these. They're going to be approximately two and a half meters high and uh, we're gonna see if the less escape system is going to be stable because of course the launch escape system is your best friend, friend during launch so we need to be absolutely certain that the system works but also soon we're gonna be doing the actual test fire of this engine with Galsit solid propellant to see if it's if it works if we are able to actually produce a solid propellant engine in this small size. There are actually some uh, disadvantages of having these small sizes, but uh, we're going to test this before the flight, naturally. So, um, working one ten scale, one third scale, and full scale with a different purpose for each model. That's the approach right now. And um, it's also worth mentioning that our dear friend Cameron Smith, working our spacesuit in, uh, in Oregon, in the US, he's going hopefully to be here in August, and he's going to come here with his, uh, his spacesuit with one of his partners, and we're going to see it for the first time. We're very excited to, uh, to actually see the suit.
but uh, we will also try and, and perform some tests with uh, body behavior and movement inside the suit when the suit is pressurized and uh, I'm still trying to work my way into finding a vacuum chamber a professional type vacuum chamber so we can have a man test as well in vacuum or at least nearby so we can see uh, the entire system working that we feel that it's comfortable and I hope also that I'm able to to add the hatch hole in full scale on the boilerplates so we can try the suit on on pressurized inside the capsule see how uh, movement actually works maybe do a bit of measuring on where to place control panels and handles and eventually very important to see if it's possible for egress ingress that means getting in and out of the space capsule with the suit on unpressurized and pressurized because there's no need of having a hatch that you can detach suddenly for an emergency uh, egress if you're not able to get out of the space capsule. So of course we need to get all those measurements lined up and work accordingly to all the subsystems. So it's going to be an interesting summer and hopefully we're going to have one of the, a lot of the major components so we can begin to do a more detailed work on the actual internal construction of the pressurized chamber. The pressurized chamber on, on the space capsule, which is actually the lower part here, where the astronaut is going to be, is so far going to be min have to be maintaining a pressure of one bar in space. And that means that you, on each square meter has approximately a pressure of about 10 tons. So even with only one bar of overpressure, you're going to have a lot of force on the actual hull. So uh, I want to do a solid works calculation uh, to figure out the, the best way to have an inner rib construction that works with all the system and, and that doesn't uh, conflict with the hatch. So that's kind of the next step. And uh, finally, apparently there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, Rene is also working on upriding back systems. In this upper part here, we're going to have the upriding bags. Those are the balloons that will be inflated after splashdown, making sure that the capsule is orientated the correct way uh, after splashdown. And we want to, uh, during this summer, work those compartments, test the balloons, and we want to take the full-scale mock-up of the capsule and bring it down to the Copenhagen Harbor area, plunge the capsule in the water, and try and play with the balloons to see if the operating system actually works like we want to. What we want to see is actually that the sequence is controlled, that the balloons are capable of holding on to the capsule without being uh, destroyed. And of course, we need to see that the capsule end up in the correct position. For instance, we need the hatch to be facing towards the sky. So you can have a, a steady uh, orientation of the capsule where you can actually you can leave the capsule at sea if you want to without flooding the capsule. And later during uh, spring, no, the fall of 2013, I hope that we will be able to take the full scale boilerplate, bring, take it to Linear for another drop test and, um, and test various situations, splash down, simulating all three main parachutes and maybe even stretch it a bit, simulating that one or two parachutes has failed that gives us higher velocity and a bigger splash to see if the structure of the space capsule is actually uh, able to, uh, to withstand the forces. So um, a lot of uh, interesting things going on and uh, I can only say it's going to be a busy period right now in the space capsule department. So like I said, it, besides doing the planning right now for the SAFAR launch, which we will hopefully do, um, most of the time and effort actually goes into, uh, for me to go into Taiko Deep Space 2. That's how you fix a spacecraft.